have been reported, uh, they're glued on, and the report that the glue comes off, and then they exit, and of course when they exit, they exit into the propeller. The other thing is that the way the aircraft, the air filters are safety wired. The reason for the safety wire is to prevent the air filter from entering the prop and it comes loose. It falls off. The problem that you have is although this maintains the air filter onto the carburetors, the clamps, which are the reason that it came off, still enter the propeller. So the recommended way is to take this line here down underneath the clamp and then back to the air filter. And then that way, if the air filter clamp is loose and the air filter does come off, it's still actually held in place by the safety wire. Now the other problem that you have here is, again, you see these little screws. Now the screws will have a tendency to vibrate out, and when they vibrate out, again, they go through the propeller. So what you can do is you take a little bit of silicone, you put a little bit of silicone on that, or uh, some people take duct tape and put duct tape across it. Oh, yeah. Now this is the installation of one of the exhaust systems, and you can see that this exhaust system has two clamps, a clamp here and a clamp here, and this prevents the uh, springs from, uh, because it doesn't use springs, from entering the exhaust system with the brake. Now one of the problems that you have in some installations is it's very difficult to check your uh, fan belt or fan belt tension. So what you can do is you take your cover off and you remove this tip here that uh, covers the belt. Now with the engine turned off at any point in time, you can come in and uh, check your belt tension. That's on the 503, 377, and 447 Rotax engines. Now this is an idle prop installation, a two blade. The problem that you have here is they haven't installed the movement tape, and without uh, the movement tape, if the bolts were to come loose, you have no way of telling it, and uh, potential uh, results are that the uh, propeller could fail. So there should be a set of movement tape here, here, and on the same uh, side on the other side. Now this is a uh, 503 Rotax engine, but it uses the same style of exhaust, and you can see that we silicone the springs. The problem with this is, the silicone, the place that it breaks, is it breaks right here at the ends. So where you really need the silicone is right there. This will stop the harmonic resonance or help prevent the harmonic resonance. But the place where you need the silicone is right there and there. Now this spring here is under tension. Actually, it should face just like this one here. This is a spring that is more likely to break because it's not installed properly. Now this is the style of air filter they want to use. And this, again, is the uh, way that it's clamped. Again, you can see that if the air filter comes off, the clamps still enter the propeller. So again, what you want to do is just run the safety wire underneath the clamp and back to the cover and uh, that uh, prevents the uh, air filter clamp from entering the prop. And you can see that this individual has put duct tape to prevent the bolts uh, from the uh, cowl uh, from entering the exhaust system. And this is the proper installation for the fuel pump. You can see the fuel pump is mounted above the impulse line. It's mounted with the impulse hole which is a little vent hole in your hair facing down. Um, this line is a thick walled line, and all of the system is clamped. Also, you can see that this has got a, a choke here that isn't being used, and the pilot has um, put a rubber uh, socket over it to, to prevent water from entering. Now, this is a GSC prop. And the GSC prop, if installed correctly, is supposed to have a uniform gap just like this all the way around in the propeller. And you can see on this one, it has. If the uh, prop is clamped too tight, that results in uh, the blades uh, deforming in at the hub and uh, potential for failure. The other things that this pilot has done, the safety wire, is he's put the bolts all the way through and put nuts on the other side, lock nuts, which uh, help. Uh, 
prevent the uh, bolts from coming loose and the uh, uh, prop coming off. Now also, if you're using a GSC prop, in this hub here, you you have to install a set of dowels, and the dowels take the strain uh, from the or the shock load uh, uh, away from the uh, bolts that are used to retain the uh, or hold the propeller onto the uh, gearbox. Now this pilot has installed an electric fuel pump to assist the, the vacuum fuel pump, and also in case of the vacuum uh, fuel pump failure, and also it helps. Um, when you have a, a gas tank that's mounted below the engine and the engine's been turned on for a while, it helps bring fuel uh, up to the carburetors uh, rather than turn the engine over to bring the fuel to the carburetors. And this is a proper installation in that the uh, pilot has run two separate systems to the carburetors. That is, that he has his fuel pump, which is located up in here, dual fuel pump, uh, as his vacuum line, and then from his pump, he's running one system to the carburetors from his from the vacuum pump, and then from his electric pump, he's running a second system to the carburetors, so that he's pumping fuel directly to the carburetors from both systems, rather than in series where he would be pumping through the, the one pump. And if this diaphragm were to fail, then he's actually pumping fuel directly into the engine. Now this is a 582 Rotax engine. Uh, this is uh, the pre-Bluehead series, but the, basically the engine is the same. Um, on both systems, you have this rotary valve tank. And you can see this is a pusher configuration. Anything coming off of this engine is going to go into the tank. You see there's a little uh, tie-down spot here. And if you were to look real closely at the, the top of this cap, you'll find that there's a hole in the cap. And what you do is you simply safety wire the cap to the uh, tank and that prevents the cap from entering the propeller. Now this exhaust gasket here is leaking. And there are two things that could cause this. One is that the exhaust system has been removed and then uh, replaced and the gaskets haven't uh, been replaced because you can only use these gaskets once. Once they're compressed, you try to use them again, you can't. The other thing is that the ignition on this side, uh, possibly a spark plug is going bad or it could be that he's had a cold seizure and the fuel is burning efficiently on the one side and thus is leaking onto the exhaust system. Now, if you're installing a heat sending unit on a Rotax 582, you want to install this heat sending unit in the center of the cylinder head. A lot of people will install the heat sending unit out on one of the uh, rad hoses in this area here. The problem is that this will cause a 30 degree difference in the reading on a gauge up on the dash going from here to here. So the proper unit, the proper place to install the heat sending unit is here. Now, if you're setting up an oil pump on a Rotax 582 engine, this arm here activates the oil pump. And there's a line on the arm and a line on the casting. And those two lines at an idle are supposed to be lined up. Now, if you're bleeding your oil pump for the first time, you use this bleed screw here. You remove the bleed screw or loosen it off. You drain all of the uh, air out of the lines. Then you have to turn your engine over, and you have to eliminate all of the. Uh, you have to eliminate all of the air in the lines. It's supposed to be solid oil going into the engine. Now here you can see the cap uh, on the rotor valve tank, uh, and the way that it's safety are. You see the little hole in the cap, and how it comes back onto the tank. The Rotax 582 here in the blue head stop. These are spark plug caps. Now these caps should be very difficult to remove, as you can see. And this is the wrong style of spark plug to use here. This cap here has got an aluminum head on it. And the problem that you have with the aluminum, as you can see here, it's already starting to wear. When it wears, it makes a loose fit for this. The, the type of spark plug you want is called, it has a steel cap on it. They're a little more expensive, but they don't wear, and the cap stays on. The type of plug that you want to use, you can see that it has a steel cap. It cannot be removed. It's part of the spark plug. And it doesn't wear like the aluminum cap.